Today's video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. More on how you can save money on the games you love later in the video. The date was March 15th, 2021. I had just posted my first video on this channel titled, Can You Beat Borderlands 2 with Only the Bane? Fast forward two years to today, and the channel has grown way more than I could have ever guessed or hoped for. And so for the 50k special, I've decided to make this challenge a throwback. Today we ask, can you beat Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep with only the Bane? I'm going to lay down the rules for you real quick. Bane only, Bane always. I can't equip guns that aren't the Bane and I always have to have at least one Bane equipped. This way there is no way to escape its movement penalty. I will also not be using bar during this run. Any nine unique shields are fair game and stock grenades are allowed so I can hit some sick grenade jumps. And for the relic, I'll just throw this thing in there as a placeholder because it does literally nothing in single player. Now, I usually do these runs on UVHM OP10, but to make this run truly cursed, I've made some decisions. First off, we aren't actually playing Borderlands 2 this time around. We're playing the standalone release of this DLC. This game only has normal mode and TVHM, so I'll be trying to beat TVHM. This might sound easier than what I usually do, but worry not. The bank can only legitimately be obtained at level 7, 8, 9, 10, and 25. So for a majority of this run, we will be using severely underleveled gear. For example, we will start at level 17, matching the level on the first mission, and our banes are already 7 levels under us. Cursed decision number 2 was picking Salvador this time around instead of Maya. That's right baby, double the bane, double the pain. To make sure we can stay gunzerking more often and really minimize our speed, I'll be using the legendary berserker for the cooldown rate. As for the skills, I'll go over them as we go, but Insight and Bust That Can't Slow Down are both banned for this run since they make me move faster and I'm not trying to get any motion sickness. And for the third and final curse decision, I'm going to play this whole run with all the volume settings set to zero. Some of you guys might be thinking I'm just trying to dodge the annoying screaming that the Bane makes, but you couldn't be farther from the truth. Returning viewers know my video format. I put muted gameplay in the background while I talk about challenges throughout the run and make jokes, kind of like I'm doing right now. But the only difference here is that this clip in the background isn't muted at all. For real though, it's not muted. This is just the gameplay when everything is set to zero. Well, that is until. The entirety of this challenge was an audible roller coaster, going from pure silence to raw, ear shattering pain in an instant. We start our journey at the unassuming docks, and honestly, the lack of audio felt pretty weird. I mean, Lilith was talking, so I was kind of popping off at the fact that I couldn't hear her, but still. Anyway, if you want a reference for how slow we're actually going, the time it took me to get from here to here was about three and a half minutes. I did the math, and if my calculations are right, we're moving at a solid speed of turtle. With this speed, it was super hard to dodge the arrows from the skeletons up ahead. On top of that, I'm pretty sure the arrows they shoot slow you down even more. Yeah, I didn't think I was ever going to get stun locked in a Borderlands game, but here we are. Anyway, Mr. Bony Pants Guy showed up and our first boss fight started. I would say this fight went decently, I guess? I mean, my banes are dealing decent damage even though they were 9 levels under. But this being a cursed run and all, Mr. BPG just started going after his own homies. Guess he just had a bone to pick with him, I don't know. Okay, that's a little uncalled for, the joke wasn't that bad. Alright game, we've been through this before. You throw some major wins my way early on to build up my hope, and then later on you just make new rules to smack me down with some other cursed shenanigans. But joke's on you game, I already planned on torturing myself extra for this run. On the way to Flame Rock Refuge, I kept one of the skeletons alive, or unalive I should say. Anyway, I kept him around and had him just smack me forward to save some time. I'm going to be calling this strat baddie boosting. Wait, scratch that. Boner boosting. Anyway, we made it to Flame Rock and started doing all the town tasks, but I messed up big time when I was trying to block the bar patron so he didn't run away. I felt really smart right up until the point I realized I was blocking the wrong one. I'm not really in any shape to chase someone and honestly thought I soft blocked the run. Lucky for us though, he just does laps around town and we just had to wait for him to come back around. The next area we had to traverse was the forest. Combat here was still reasonable. The tree ants and stumpies were relatively easy to fight. I thought it was kind of funny that the subtitles from the Bane were blocking my Gunzerk duration meter. It was such a minor inconvenience compared to everything else going on and I just thought that was funny. I also managed to catch a fairy and she even gave me the speed boost effect. 
After getting a speeding ticket and fighting through some spiders, we made it to our first orc camp. This is where things really started to go bad. Like, what if you wanted some blood fruit, but God said... Yeah, I don't think I have to show you the equation for a super tanky boss that's 6 levels above us and 13 levels above our gear to show that this wasn't going to work. It was time for a new plan. That plan being stealth. All I really needed to do was get the blood fruit and head out, so if I could just get there without being seen, I would have a chance at progressing. A few tries in, we just barely got out of his reach, and he ended up getting stuck on something, so I took this chance to get some free XP. Also, you guys can't get mad at me for cheesing him like this, because he's technically hitting me, so it's really just a skill issue on his end. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. In that case, now is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Instant Gaming. If you're sick of waiting for games to go on sale, Instant Gaming is the site for you. They've got all your bases covered. I'm talking Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. It's also super quick and easy to get access to that game that's been on your wishlist for way too long. Don't make the same mistake I did when I bought this game for full price when I could have had it half off and saved five bucks. In gas mask currency, that's like two whole monsters. Maybe you're looking for a deal on a co-op game to play with your friends. Or maybe you just got a new PC and want to fill up your game library without dropping a fortune. Instant Gaming has you covered. How about this? Think of a game that you've been wanting to play right now. And then check out the link in the description and see what kind of deal Instant Gaming is offering on it. And if you like the deal and decide to make a purchase, just know that on top of saving yourself some money, you're also supporting the channel. Anyway, let's see how much progress we've made. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just gonna jump cut this one. We got our fruit and made it to the Immortal Woods. We didn't make it too far into the woods before I realized that, oh yeah, we need to farm XP for this run, so we went back to Flame Rock to grab a few side quests. We got some easy XP by watching Reginald, well, uh, die. And then we got Ellie some armor. These two missions combined got us a total of one level, which doesn't sound like much, but it made the scary skulls next to the bad guys' names go away, so I felt a little bit more comfortable in the woods. Here we did two more side quests. We suffered through the Dark Souls quest that took like an hour and a half because I kept dying. Very reminiscent of when I tried to play Dark Souls for the first time. And we also completed the critical fail mission to unlock a very useful experience farm. Instead of trying to find more missions, I decided to farm Argux the Butcher and all the tree ants along the way. We were kind of getting rolled most of the time, but it was all worth it when we got the style on Argux at the end of each run. I put the stinky on him. We farmed up to level 21 here before we went back to the woods and met up with our homie Roland. Wait, Roland, no, I just got here, dude, wait. Anyway, another 10 minutes later, I caught up to Roland and started the scariest fight yet. The Ghost Kings are usually tough even if you're not doing a challenge run, so I was prepared to suffer here. There is no running away from these guys. Well, actually, there's no running away from anything, actually. Uh, even the Stumpies could chase me down, but you get the point. Something kind of unexpected happened, though. They would bully me to the edge of the arena, but then their attacks would just start whiffing because I was way lower than them. This kinda felt like a cheese, but it also kinda wasn't. Okay, let's say I didn't want to kill them from this safety spot. That would require me to just run directly into oncoming attacks, which doesn't feel like I'm avoiding a cheese, it just feels like I'm throwing for content at that point. I mean, they're the ones that kept smacking me down here, so again, I have to say, it's a skill issue on their part. To be fair though, their laser eye attacks were still super deadly and they did end up killing me multiple times. I mean, come on, on top of my gear being level 10, these guys are also unslaggable and resistant to all elements. So getting a kill was just a matter of did he use the eye laser during the attempt or not. Even with this pseudo safe spot, it still took about an hour to fight through all the ghost kings. I was genuinely surprised how well that fight went and went to the mines with plenty of confidence. Yeah, then my confidence was absolutely destroyed, stepped on, kicked, lit on fire, etc. I'm going to throw up the map here and just show you guys my travel history as I talk about this dump. We start off by trying to fight the bad guys that were now 12 levels over our banes. In order to get second wins, I had to ditch some of our Gunzerk duration skills for down not out, which allows us to Gunzerk and fight for your life. If it seems like I have a lot of skill points, that's because, uh, I do. But that's just because this game gives you two skill points for every level up. Anyway, this fix didn't help much, especially since the next bad guy we had to face was another Duke of Orc. Maxing out at level 27, I figured that the likelihood of me shooting this guy to death was practically non-existent. So I caved, and let my inner instincts kick in. And the nade, and the nade, please. I put the stinky on him. 
After that, we slowly made our way to Ragnar and then proceeded to uppercut him and make many of my cloned brethren hate me. After that, we found Claptrap and started making our way to the runes to unlock the exit before realizing I didn't hit the objective for looking at the door and having to turn around. A tiny mistake I usually wouldn't bring up, but since it took up a percentage of my lifespan that could probably fit on a small calculator, I thought I would bring it up. We got our first rune by bullying Claptrap into submission and started fighting some big rocks. Here I realized I was living in a reality where rocks were more animate than me. A lot more deadly, too. After fighting and dying to a bunch of the angry clones, we made it to the jumping puzzle. Now I think this jumping puzzle is possible to do with the right grenade jumps. However, the jumps would need to be extremely precise. Like you would have to use your jump momentum from the platform launching you upward and have a grenade explode in the right spot at the exact perfect time. I failed enough times to make the bridge just pop up and felt super depressed because of my lack of skill. But where I lack in physical ability, I make up in mental ability. Because I was able to complete this next puzzle with ease. After that, we jump into the fight with Greedtooth to secure our final rune piece. This is where our underleveled gear went from being an issue that slowed us down, no pun intended, to a literal impassable wall. Much like the Ghost Kings, I was bullied into a corner and was just left there to take hit after hit. Even with a damage shrine, this was about as far as I could get. Yeah, so our only hope at this point was to get to level 25 and use the next legitimately obtainable bane. So we ran back to Claptrap to do some side missions. On the way, I found a melee shrine. Some of you guys may not know this, but on top of giving you melee damage, these shrines turn every melee hit into a strong knockback punch, meaning literally anyone could put the stinky on these doors if they wanted to. But when you combine the power of a melee shrine and the power of the best skill in the game, you unlock a move I like to call the stanky. Wait, here we go. Can you survive a punch for me? Oh my god, that does launch him. Anyway, we made it to Claptrap and took his first mission where we need to crush some dwarves in a crusher. After that, we need to run through pretty much the entire map again, just to beat this beard with a sledgehammer, I guess. And then we had to run all the way back to Claptrap. I would like to mention that the enemies have already respawned two or three times by now, so every corner of this map was still combat dense. Almost as dense as the rocks forcibly being shoved into my eye sockets. The next mission was to kill some magic enemies to charge up Clappy's wand. First off, we had to blow up a magic golem with some explosive damage. The plan was to get him low and then bounce a stock grenade at him. However, I messed up and softlocked the mission somehow, so I had to run through the whole map again and re-stinky the Duke of Orc. That is a word now, so make sure to add it to your dictionary. Anyway, we blew up the golem, backtracked to kill a magic orc with a crit, and kill a magic spider with a shock bane. And after all that, it was time for one of my favorite missions in Borderlands 2. Or, sorry, I should say one of my favorite missions in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keeper Wonderland's One-Shot Adventure. During this mission, Clappy spawns several waves of brooms that you have to fight. I would highly recommend you play this mission on Krieg with a Blood Splosion build, because you can create a never-ending chain and get a decent chunk of XP. Anyway, we weren't Krieg, so we had to use the build and just hope we survived enough rounds. Fetch me their soul. We had some very close calls. I mean, at one point, a broom almost put the stinky on me. Yes, a broom almost humiliated me more than I have ever been. Not gonna lie, I probably would have deleted my channel if that happened to me, so thankfully it didn't. We got about four bars of XP for sending all those things to the storage closet in the sky, and we are really close to getting level 25. Another cool thing we got from this mission was our first kite shield. Now, if you haven't played this goofy standalone game, you probably don't know what this is. For some reason, they added a new shield type in this game. If we read the description, it says knocks back melee attackers with a burst of wind. And honestly, they had me sold at knocks back. Also, a burst of wind? Yeah, I don't know about that. I think they were just taking the stinky too literally. The stinky was now streamlined, and I was one step closer to godhood. And I couldn't be happier. Anyway, I started fighting my way towards Greedtooth again in hopes that I would reach level 25 before I got there. And to my luck, the last set of dwarves got me to where I needed to be. They even left some bad guys left over so I could test the new power I held. Finally, at Greedtooth, we jump in for the fight. Not only were we now one level over leveled for this fight, we also had the damage trying to really secure our win. We grabbed the final rune and thanked Gearbox for putting these teleporters here, because I've already been in this cave for six whole hours. Anyway, here's the map with the full route that I took. And now let's add all the extra walking from dying and getting sent backwards. Yikes! 
Anyway, as if we weren't already barely able to walk, we now had to climb up Hatred Shadow. On the way up, I talked to Sir Gallo and started another side mission for a little bit of XP. This made it so we had plenty of targets to take on the way up. You know, we had Sir Boyle, Sir Mash, the Darkness, and Sir Stew. We were doing pretty well, and we even got to see our kite shield put in some major work. And we made it to the top with little to no issue. And, uh, well... The one issue we kinda needed didn't show up. And by that, I mean the handsome sorcerer's dragon just... didn't show up. I tried to re-enter the area in case I missed the trigger somehow, and I was greeted with... this? Yeah, I don't know what kind of cursed shenanigans were going on, but I had a theory. Bro... I know Sir Gallo doesn't count as a player now. So yeah, we went back to finish the mission and also save quit to make sure it wasn't any other glitch and just reclimb the whole map. And uh, yeah, that didn't work at all. I had one theory in the back of my head from the very start that I thought was so unlikely that I didn't even try it. I thought to myself, there is no way the game is that spaghetti coded, that messed up, that cursed. You would think after all my past encounters with cursed occurrences, I would have learned my lesson and never doubted how scuffed this game is. Welp, here's how I fixed it. The Bane made me too slow to activate the cutscene. Bro! This game is so cursed. I cannot make this stuff up. Why does this always happen? Yeah, I was literally too slow to trigger the fight. And if I had just tested my theory, I would have saved a whole trip back up here. Anyway, the dragon fight was pretty simple. Pretty sure the dragon was focused on Roland most of the time, and the game even gave me baby dragons if I ever needed a second wind. So this was pretty easy. After the dragon was killed off, we made our way to the Lair of Infinite Agony. I know this map is right down there next to Sawtooth Cauldron on the map tier list, but if you account for the name of this place and the challenge I'm doing, you would find that I fit in pretty well. After straight up outplaying this trap but having to pretend like it got me good, we met Simon, who immediately put a curse on us. Like, can you believe the audacity this man has? What does he take me for, a curse dumpster? Aw, oh, he had us do a bunch of his dirty work, which was fine because that was more combat experience and mission experience at the end of this map. But that's just the thing. I had to get to the end of the map. And well, things just went from, oh my god, this is terrible, to, oh my god, this is terrible. But there's also a giant crusher trap preventing us from continuing on our quest. At first, I was pretty confident that I could just grenade jump through this. But I think the upward movement of the platforms ate the grenade and just made it so it didn't hit me at all. Like a lot of problems in Borderlands, I assumed it was a frame rate issue, so I capped it at 30, and this seemed to help, but I was still not getting the distance I needed. Throughout the run, many people predicted with absolute certainty that this was going to end the run. And honestly, I didn't appreciate those doubters. Like, bro, did you see what I went through in the last video? Leave me alone! If any of you viewers didn't see the last video, there's a good chance you're new here. And in that case, consider subscribing and checking out my other runs if you like the content. It helps out the channel a lot, and I would love to have you in the gas mask gang. Anyway, yeah, screw these doubters, man. I still had plan B. So we head back to Flame Rock Refuge and respec our skill points. This time going for double your fun so that we could throw two grenades while gunzerking. After that, we fought back to the Crusher Trap and did some testing, which looked very promising. Even with my confidence now at 100%, our homie Happy Turtle was still doubting me. He was so confident that he even wagered a week-long ban if I succeeded. And let's just say, we didn't hear from him for a while. May jump now. Grenade jump. Grenade scoot, I should say. Grenade scoot. Grenade scoot. Um, Happy Turtle, say goodbye to everybody. Uh, your seconds are numbered. Any last words, Happy Turtle? Bye-bye, friendos. Doubters and shambles, baby! Let's go! After we got through that scary part of the map, we fought our way back to Simon and was presented with a choice. 
kill Simon or kill Simon's brother. And since we still needed Simon to remove the curse he put on us or else we'd die in a week, I think the choice was obvious. After killing Simon, we only had one more obstacle in the luxury spot. I mean, layer of infinite agony. There goes the masochism talking again. My bad. Anyway, giant spider lady of anger and scariness was our next boss we had to tackle. This fight wouldn't be bad if it weren't for one move. No, it's not the floor spiders that I can't dodge. No, it's not the invincibility shield. It's the frickin' life drain move that really biffs up this whole run. Usually, you just have to run away from her, and she can't steal any health from you. And I swear to god, if I have to explain why that isn't an option... Oh, for the love of... What is it, Mick? Why, why can't you run away from the- Because I have the movement options of Flappy Bird! <sighs> anyway, our first attempt ended in big tragedy because we were actually really close to getting the kill. Worry not though, I had an absolutely masterful plan. I think past me explains it pretty well, so I'll just let him do the talking. Alright, I'm gonna make a tactical decision, guys. Um, I'm supposed to be wrapping up stream right about now and starting dinner. I'm gonna go make some dinner. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna start it. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm back. Um, actually, my desk is kind of messy. I'm gonna clean it up real quick. All right, I'm back. You know, I actually, I have to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Back. And we are going to fight the sorcerer's daughter now. You know what? Hold on. Actually, I'm pretty thirsty. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get a monster. All right. We got a monster. Let's kill this thing. We fucking did it. Let's go. That was fucking easy. The final thing in our way was the fight with the handsome sorcerer. Climbing up the tower proved to be pretty difficult. The sheer amount of wizards and dynamite skeletons and- Oh my gosh, don't even get me started with these things either. Skeleton seer? Uh, no I fucking don't seer. Finally at the top of the tower, we start phase one of the fight. We quickly use a slag and shock combo to destroy the sorcerer's shield, and then a slag and fire combo to finish off the first phase. Phase two got a little bit tougher. On top of trying to keep the skeletons at bay, I had to make sure to shoot the skull spells out of the air in order to not get downed which with the Bane's starting accuracy was relatively hard to do. Even if one of your Banes is at max accuracy, the recoil from a freshly reloaded one just throws everything off. This was all manageable, but phase three is where things started to really drag on. Get it? Because he summons drag- The sorcerer was now resistant to fire, and on top of that, this phase also has the biggest health bar out of them all. Our next best option was going back to the slag and shot combo, by this time I was running out of ammo, so I tried to inch my way to the ammo shrines when I could. We were so close, and this challenge was almost over. But you know how these things go. Oh, he limping. And just like that, now we know. You can beat Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep with only the Bane. Bonus content time, woo! In my other Bane video, I did the Bane side quest as a way of saying goodbye to the run. And I'll do the same here. In this game, you can find the Bane quest in the Mines of Avarice, and oh my god, it turns out you could get a legit level 22 Bane. <sighs> anyway, we talked up to the dripped out version of Marcus, found Horus out by the docks, Marked McNally in the forest, did a sick grenade jump to get Gar's map and Flame Rock Refuge, I promised this was first try and did not take a full hour to get right, and finally met my demons face to face. And with this, our true final victory has come. Before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 
Doing all that helps with the algorithm a lot. If you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a channel member. 99 cents gets you emotes and videos a day early. It also helps me get videos out faster for everyone. I will link my Discord and Twitch channel where I stream these runs live in the description. And for everyone who is already subbed, I want to thank you again for helping me hit this 50k milestone. I promised to do a Wonderlust only run at 100k subs because I truly despise that weapon. And after that, who knows? I could use the Bane in the other Borderlands game that has it for the 200k special. Anyway, shout out to Instant Gaming for being this channel's first sponsor. Make sure to check the description below and save some money. And also shout out to Mango Soda for this video's thumbnail art. He does commissions and he will also be linked in the description. But until next time, breathe easy homies.